Hello YouTube, I'm back in again with another video. Uh, this is going to be a non-custom duel. It's actually going to be a very entertaining duel. It's going to be my uh, Unchained deck versus this guy's Fairytale deck. And one thing what makes this duel really exciting is we do both go back and forth with each other. But let me fast forward so you can get straight to the uh, game. And you'll see based on our hands and field. And starting off is my opponent. He activates Golden Castle Stromberg. It's one of those mandatory cards you have to have on the field in order to summon Hextrude. And I assume he's going to be that. If I remember, he's going to be going to um, a number XC rank 8 monster. I think it's called Dragulibon. Dragulibon. I don't, know I'm, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. I was going to get mixed up for Dragulon, but it's um, a rank 8 number monster. And um, although, as even this is pretty much my first to be here, it's my first time seeing Astral Creepo. But there's definitely some limitations, like, but reading its effect, it seems definitely busted. Pretty much becomes, yes, you could, you're limit, you're, you're only limited to summoning number monsters, but it's like, it becomes the level of the monster that you target when special summoned. So, my bad, no, I misread that. Uh, it's actually the rank of its level becomes equal to that monster's rank. And I have a great overall, I have a nice hand. And I'm curious about soul absorption. Soul absorption. It's been a while since I've this card. I know the card's effect is just you normally don't see this card in a lot of decks. It's not, not that it's unusual, but it's one of those cards that just happens to be a dead weight. And you want to add more space to more consistent cards or uh, clutch cards. But either way, I use Abomination's Prison to add one of my Unchained Monsters, and which is Aruha, popping the trap, which will trigger the trap's effect, allowing me to special summon an Unchained Monster from my deck. And I do understand he will be getting like pretty much 5,000 because he's to banish 10. And then uh, let me go back to Sarama here. So I, re I set the trap that I just destroyed, and then pop Aruha. And Ruha will this effect will resolve will trigger, allowing to put some uh, chain monster from my deck, similar to Abominable Chamber. Uh, let me feel, so yeah, and then I'll go to Rakia. And he's pretty much got me in a tight spot because yeah, apparently not only can this card not be targeted by card fits, it can be destroyed by card fits, thanks to Astral Karibo. So he's not immune, it's just I can't be able to do like get rid of it easily so I can't destroy it but I thought I could but then only realize after keep so I have to change my target to something else. I can only change to a target that to a card that can be destroyed by a card effect. So he can't be target destroyed so I pretty much have to target another card. Alright, so and I have no clue because even that was my mistake because like I didn't really read the entire effect, so I was kind of confused, like, what? Even if it literally cannot be targeted, but with Karibo uh, attached, it's like, okay, I understand, I get it. Uh, I pretty much have to uh, accept, so I'll destroy something else. And let me fast forward here. It's his turn. Now I'm guessing he's going to special summon a number from his extra deck to the field. And I let him know that he's in the clear. So even if he attacks my Rakia, it's not really a loss because I can I I can manage to summon another Enchained Monster from my deck. So I'll still I'll still be getting more monsters on my field because even though I'm sta even though he's stacking monsters on my field, I still get more monsters out. Oh, this is gonna take a while. All right, he's gonna be going for Harbinger. All right, he's gonna be going for Hope Harbinger, and then to Numeron Dragon. I I was gonna be confused as to how he summoned it, but Dragulubion has a pretty confusing effect, and he's going to wipe out my field with uh, Numeron's effect. Uh, he's not in my entire field, just my monsters. I could have been able to set a spell trap for my grave to the field, but uh, I realized I missed, but I didn't even read the effect carefully. I'm pretty sure I would have been allowed to do that. But I was like, I thought it only applied to him or something. Okay. 
damn, that was pretty stupid. I, I regret not setting Abomination's prison. Because I didn't read the entire effect, I was in a rush. So I'm guessing this card has like... A thousand, like nine thousand attack, I assume? Okay, I was right, yes. So he'll be attacking me to disaster, allowing me to special summon a chain monster from my grave. Aruha. I could have chose to go into something else. I could have chose to go into a chain soul. And the reason why I decided, do I even summon Unchained Soul? Yes, I do actually. Because it was destroyed that turn, so. So I'm trying to figure, yep, yeah, I'm going to have to pop Nibiru to get rid of his Numeron Dragon. Unless he has any protection, I'm trying to remember, but no, he doesn't. Alright, I had to, because that, that card's going to be a problem for me. And then end phase, I use Abominable Chamber to special summon from my grave. Hopefully it's Sarama, yes. Let's fast forward here, it's my turn. I'll use Sarama's effects, the same thing, set as Unchained Spell Trap and popping one of my Unchained Monsters, which will trigger Aruha's effect, allowing me to put some Unchained Monster from my deck to field. And although I do manage to keep my field alive, it's like I be to be I don't have any monsters that can get rid of Dragoo Beyond right now, seriously. Unless I Unless I like go into my battle phase and then I just uh, like sacrifice one of my monsters, possibly, yeah. Maybe that's the only option for me, even though, the, yeah, which is a good thing because even like if he does, but I already use this effect because one of what happens if Unchained Soul does get destroyed, it's just gonna go back to the, it's gonna, he's not gonna go to the grave, he's gonna go to the bottom of the deck because it's already special summoned it last turn uh, from the grave. And you have to read it carefully too, so. Because when it leaves the field, it has to go uh, to the bottom of your deck. And I'm still wondering, like... And I'm confused why he even sent Dengusi to the grave. I, I think it was just a misclick, so... Yeah. He's, he's right. Pretend like nothing happened. So the best way is I decide to go into something special. My Unworld Goddess of the Closed World. Since the only monster... The not, not only the only monster has some too, it's the only monster that can get rid of this guy. And then I reveal uh, Lord of the Heavenly Prison, since I have a, a set spell trial card. And Goddess will attack, will attack my opponent directly for 3k. He's at 5,000, and I pass my turn. So he already has like 3 cards in hand. It lo definitely looks, it looks good for him now that he has Mystic Mind, but... Yeah, degenerate card already. Annoying as hell too. And I figure, oh, since Mystic Minds I feel I can't activate Lord the Heavenly Prison's effect to set. So you know we're just gonna Yeah, we're just gonna keep we're just gonna fast forward. Mystic Mind is just fucking toxic. And I'm pretty sure where like um I wanna just keep I, I want I just wanna keep this do a fast forward because you know I pretty much can't do anything until he summons something, alright? So I'll continue with my field. So he summons Danger Bigfoot. He plays Harpy's Feather Duster. I'll chain with my Ice Dragon's Prison, and I'll possibly use Imperm. I don't think it really do much, but because I was gonna wait till he summoned a monster, then I would I would have slowed the video. But I'm gonna use it to target his whole Harbinger just in case he has he plans to retrieve it and then just get just stop my spell and traps. And I even stop my traps, my spelling cards. It's because he can pretty much negate those cards, and they could be a game changer. Even though I rarely play any spells in my deck. Just in case, so. But judging from the field, even though I have more monsters, he's still thinking. Yeah, unless he had more monsters than me, I pretty much can find ways to get rid of Mystic Mind using Unchained uh, Soul. But right now. I'm gonna have to play it carefully. I already have like three monsters with already 3k, two with 3k attack, one with 3k defense. So I'm a, I'm pretty I'm pretty comfortable with my field so far. Unless he has Raigeki, he has Super Poly. I had no clue that he even had that card. So, but again, let, let me fast forward here. So he will be playing it for Mud Dragon. 
I'm assuming yeah, he got rid of two of my monsters. All right. And lucky for me, I have Ash on my field. Comes in clutch, cause he would have potentially found another another way to summon into another strong monster, going to possibly a, another rank eight. So I don't want to take that chance for sure. So he's stuck with Bigfoot and Mud Dragon the Swamp. I'm gonna fast forward with his set of card. I'll use Arua's effect. Same thing. You know the drill. Let's fast forward. Triggers his effect. And then I assume, okay, um, so what he did was he used Mud Dragon's effect, so he declares an attribute, and neither player, I'm assuming, or yeah, I'm, I cannot target monsters with the same attribute as this card, which is really irritating, so. And he, he did admit defeat, but although it didn't really, honestly, I, I didn't, I didn't it, it was definitely a really close duel, it was definitely a fun duel. But I felt like it was a draw in my opinion because he said he had to go like, just by reading the chat. But honestly, it could I don't know if it could have went both ways possibly. But he still had this out on the field so he could match summon something. So he could defeat normal. But he would deck out for sure. But it's like, I, said, I feel like I had the bigger advantages the amount of monsters I had and the set uh, trap cards and the one in my hand. So. Just in your in the comment section, I, I'm curious about how you guys feel about this duel, whether it's great, and who could have possibly won. It could could have been me or my opponent. And if you do, uh, for sure, I'll obviously uh, do find ways to be, uh, be sure to showcase you more exciting duels like this one. Although there was no result, the, yeah, he did he did leave. Although yes, he did leave the duel. So you could say I pretty much won. In this scenario, because although he had to go, yeah, we we would love to see the final results. We want to see how the the duel would have turned out at the end. But again, I felt like I had the upper hand considering the life points and the monsters. Like you, you saw the field. you can you can tell the difference. You can notice the uh, advantage right now. But unless he somehow manages to turn turn the tide and drew in something that. Something uh, un unthinkable, like something that I, I couldn't imagine, like, and if hoping that I would win next turn or my next turn, whatever, then I was, I was, uh, I was, I became way too eager. I got too cocky, and I should, you should always wait until the last card is drawn, just like Jade and Yuki says. And again, I hope you guys enjoyed the duel. Be sure to check for more upcoming content later in the future. Be sure to check the notifications. Comment, like, subscribe. Thank you.